Hi guys, it's Katie from riddlelove.com. So glad to have you here. So today we are going to talk about chores and how on earth to get the children to do them. Now, I am going to be real with you this whole time. I would love for there to be some sort of magic answer that says, write these chores out and your children will work with smiles on their faces and get all your work done and your house will never be dirty again. But I'm going to be real with you and I've been on this journey of finding a chore system that works for several years and I think I found one that kind of works for the most part. It works. I will tell you the good news first. The good news is your children will not be on electronics hardly ever anymore. The good news is you will not hear I'm bored hardly ever. You will see your kids start to take ownership of areas that they've cleaned very quickly. Um, you'll automatically start to hear things like, don't put your stuff there, I just cleaned that. And you'll stop and sit in wonder for a little while and think, wait a second, I didn't say that. My kids just said that. Something's getting through. The real news is this is a long-term goal with some short-term heavy requirements on the parent's part. This is a high-maintenance short-term, guys. Um, there will be a lot of demand on us as parents. They will need to be trained on how to do their chores. They will need encouragement. And as much as we would love to be able to just post up some chore charts and voila, our house is clean and the kids know what to do, it just doesn't work that way. Especially if they're not already used to kind of a routine of cleaning up after themselves or helping out around the house. So um, a couple things I've come up with. Um, I just finished listening to um, Smart Money, Smart Kids by Dave Ramsey. And it is, I listen to audiobooks as I fold laundry. And it is an amazing book that I highly recommend that you get. Um, but he just kind of breezed through how they train their kids to use money wisely. And part of what they talked about was that they have their kids working on commission. They don't get you know, allowance. They don't get a certain amount of money every week. They have a set list of chores that they have to do. And if they do it, they get paid. If they don't do it, they don't get paid. And it just made a whole lot of sense to me. So as I sat down and tried to do, you know, a doable chore chart for my kids, I realized I had a lot of things I wanted them to do. And some of them made sense for them to get paid for, you know, like um, helping me wash the windows or something like that. There were other things that I realized, you know what, because they're older, they should know that they need to make their bed every day. They should know that they need to rinse the toothpaste out of the sink every day. Um, and so I decided to start a second list that is actually entitled Because You Are Older. And on this list are things that um, I want them to master, um, to do on their own. Um, and so for us, a lot of what I wrote down was things like that. Make your bed every morning before school. Rinse the toothpaste down the drain after you brush your teeth. Take your dishes to the sink when you're done eating and things like that. Um, and it'll change throughout once they start mastering things, maybe, and once they start growing up a little older, we'll add some more things of just main areas that they need to just do because they're older to um, contribute as a part of the family and in help. I've told the kids several times, I, I can't do it all on my own. There's too many of us. And even if I did try to do it all on my own, I would not have a life outside of cleaning up after everybody. And I'll be very grumpy and not a fun mom. So before they're even able to start on their commissions chores, they need to get done the because you are older chores. Again, those are just the basic you have the ability to do this and I don't need to do this for you anymore. You are not too. So um, once they're able to finish their because you were older chart, they can then look on their chore chart. Now, the way I've broken it up, I have four kids who are old enough to do chores now. The youngest is six and our oldest is about to be 13. And um, on it, there are some chores that they do every day. I have a little block Every day, they get to be my helper for 15 minutes. Um, this gives me the freedom. I have a little list that I refer to because I think I'll remember what I want them to help me with, but I don't always remember. So um, I'll have a list of things like 
clean the kitchen table if that's not already on their chore list. Um, things like um, go play with Joseph, your young brother, for 15 minutes. Just whatever I need at the moment at that time, they're going to help me for 15 minutes. Another one they do every day is kitchen work. So that could be anywhere between helping me make dinner, setting the table, making sure everybody has water cups, whatever is needed for the time to get dinner ready, they're going to help for 15 minutes every day. Um, other things I have on the list are um, read a book to your little brother. Everybody does that once a week. So since there's four kids, I have a child helping me. A lot of times they'll do a different chore um, every day, but um, it'll be like once a week someone vacuums. Um, so to make to try and break that up, um, th this means I have four children working, doing their chores, old enough to help me with chores, and I've got four kids vacuuming a week. So I've got four days a week where they're vacuuming. I break it up into 15 minute segments. So once everything's all said and done, they basically have an hour's worth of paid chores or to do to where they can make a commission, which I really don't feel is a huge chunk of time, especially if they're gonna be getting paid for this. I wanna give you a few tips on setting this up for success because it can be a little bit tricky. Um, I want to share some things I have learned the hard way so you don't have to. Now, I spent hours putting together this these chore lists that I felt made perfect sense that they could just walk up to, look at, and check off. But it doesn't work that way. Just like in any other job, there needs to be clear training. So you need to allow yourself a good one to two weeks on just teaching the kids how to do their chores well. If cleaning the bathroom is one of them, you need to show them where the cleaners are. You need to show them where the rags are. I've even written a little cheat sheet. When you open up the, you know, under the sink where we keep our cleaner, there's a little sheet that just has little reminders like scrub the kitchen. I mean, scrub the bathroom sink, scrub the counter, wipe down the toilet, and then I will show them how to do those. So we don't use the same rag that we just used on the toilet on our sink. That's nasty. You know, you have to explain these things. They don't get it. Um, and training. Now, I did pay my kids while I trained them because in real life, when you're being trained for a job, they're usually paying you. You're on probation. We don't have that luxury. We can't fire our kids. We are training them up in the way they should go. So it all falls on us. But um, we do, I did pay them because they're learning a skill and they are working. And I might not be benefiting from it yet, but I will be. So, um, so give the first two weeks, just know that you're going to be training your kids. You can't expect them to just go and know what to do. Again, show them where the cleaners are. Show them where the rags are. Show them how to do their job well. Um, and they're going to need to be reminded. I would have loved it if I could tell them once and they were experts, but that's not how it works. We have to give them grace and encouragement. Just the same things all of us want when we're learning a new thing. Um, you know, even with vacuuming, I keep telling them, pretend like you're doing a row. You go up and down and then do a row right next to it, up and down. And they still feel overwhelmed by that whole line theory. So have grace for your kids um, and lots of encouragement and lots of clarity. Remember, give yourself a one to two weeks time of training. You're training them how to clean the house. You can't expect them to know what to do. Even if it feels so simple, they're going to need clear instructions. We want to set them up for success. We want them to know um, how to do their job well. So um, once you've gone through that training process, I will tell you, you know, we've been doing this chore structure for a few months now. And even just this morning, we had a total explosion where <laughs> I you know, they would ask, we want to do our chores. What do we do? And I said, you have a chore chart that tells you what to do. And they'll tell me I did all my chores. And then I'll go in the room because one of the first things that they need to do is make sure your room is clean before you move on. And I go in and it's clean ish. So I've realized I have to tell them your room needs to be ready to vacuum. That means don't push things in a pile or kind of put most of the big items away. I'm going to be vacuuming or someone's coming in to vacuum your floor and you need to be ready for that. And so just know that this is a process and it does take time and it's not for the faint of heart. And I have to 
cite back to myself the fruits of the Spirit every morning because self-control and patience can really be taxing when you're trying to help your kids learn um, how to work, basically. So um, just gird your loins and go for it. And, um, and just give a lot of grace for yourself. Give a lot of grace for your kids. Know that there is a lot of work for you ahead during that first, I would say first month of really being on top of them, making sure, following through with them, being consistent, as we all know as parents, is a huge key. And I have not always been consistent and now I'm paying for it because too many times I have told my kids, you know, go put away all your shoes that are scattered over the house simple chore, right? But then I go and assume that they're going to do it and come back and, oh, it's not done. That's probably because they're used to me getting distracted and not following through. And they're like, whatever, mom will forget. So as much as you can be consistent, the more success that this whole chore system will have. So I've included um, what our chore charts look like in the blog post, which is linked on this video. And you're welcome to look at it. Um, It's should be in a PDF file so you can change it out and write your kid's name if you feel like that's a platform that'll work for you, kind of a system that'll work. Um, Or if you can even just look at it and maybe some new ideas will spark that'll work better for your family. Um, I've included it just so you kind of see how we're working things out. So um, we can do it, you guys. It's a big deal to teach our kids how to work and how to clean up after themselves. And it is amazing to watch them take ownership, more ownership over our house because they're actually helping clean and they're helping with the upkeep of it. And they realize that they do play a very important role in the family. It's not just hanging out. It's not just eating and then getting on electronics or playing with stuffed animals, whatever. There's so much room for play. Taking an hour of their day To work for pay teaches them stewardship of their time and um, contribution and a work ethic. And um, a quick note on that, I do follow Dave Ramsey's platform of money. We uh, decided to pay our kids about $10 a week if they get all of their chores done. So um, if they get, if they do their vacuuming really well um, for where they are, obviously my standards kind of go up the longer they do it, um, they get paid a dollar for doing that. Um, so if they say get all of their $10, they have three envelopes. We do the spend, save, and give. They always give at least 10% into the giving for offering at church. They, the saving right now for their age is if there's a huge item that they want to buy that they are going to need to save up for, they put it in there. Or if they know my kids have to pay for their birthday and Christmas presents that they want to give to people. So if they know that their friend is about to have a birthday, they need to save up for the birthday present that they're going to buy for them. Um, so sometimes that's what give is for. Spend um, is for when I say I'm going to Target and they're like, oh, I want a stuffed animal. That's where that money goes. If you know, maybe a few dollars in that spend just so that they have something to use and um, some money to play around with so they can feel what it feels like immediately for working hard and then being able to buy something and the benefits of giving the cashier their money and buying their very own toy that they worked hard for. It's a big deal. So to give you a little walkthrough of what our week looks like in the land of chores, um, the kids will check their lists. Like I said, every day they need to, what, how we schedule it basically is school first, chores second, and then free time is all theirs. So they will check their chore chart, find out what they're doing for the day, get that done, and check it off the list once it's done for the day. Every Friday for us is payday. So if I will check their lists to make sure they've gotten everything done, and if they have, at the most, they'll get $10, and they bring out their envelopes as they get paid so that I can make sure, and we talk it through, how much goes in to give, how much do you want to put in to save, what are you saving up for, what are your goals, and we'll put the rest in spend. I try and keep spend... um, especially this time of year with Christmas coming up um, or if they know of a birthday coming up that they're going to go to. We encourage saving enough for those presents. And then spend is, again, like when we go to Target and there's a stuffed animal that they want, they can use their hard-earned money and feel the rewards of working hard and buying something with it. So um, I will pay them. They'll put their money in the appropriate envelopes and they're good to go. 
So far, this has been the most effective way for our family to set up our chores. And like I said, it is no cakewalk, but I really feel like that the amount of time that we're putting in with them, learning how to work, learning how to just pick up after themselves, and also learning how to contribute to the family is benefiting them. And yep, there are grumblings that we've had to deal with and attitude adjustments. And I'm talking about not just the kids, <laughs> me too. And um, just learning exercise of patience and self-control. But in the long run, it's been amazing to watch them grow in this area. And it's so fun watching them have their first transaction at a store, buying something with their own money that they earned, getting the change back, and being in awe that there's a such thing as getting change back. And just watching the whole experience from working to getting paid to feeling the reward of it. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave one in a comment and I'll answer it. And you can do it. You can totally do it. Much blessings to you. Have fun, and I hope your chore journey starts well and that you feel the benefits of it. Coming up next week, we're doing a Thanksgiving special, and my mom is going to join us. We're going to talk about fun Thanksgiving traditions, a Thanksgiving timeline so that we can get it all done, and hopefully eliminate stress so that even the people putting on Thanksgiving can actually enjoy the day. I hope you guys can join us for then. We'll see you next week.